In this video, we're gonna take a look at Redis transactions. Redis transactions allow you to group a collection of commands into a single step, and they give you a couple of guarantees. One of those is that all your commands will be executed sequentially. That means the first command will be executed, then the second one, then the third one, and so on. This guarantees that commands are executed as a single isolated operation. The second is that either all of your commands or none of them will be processed. And what this means is that Redis transactions are atomic. And what this means in practice is that if you're in a transaction and you're running a couple of commands and then the client loses connection to the server, none of those commands will be run. However, if you call the exact command, which we'll discover in a moment, all of those commands will be performed. Now we understand a bit about transactions, let's dive in and have a look at the examples. I'm just gonna go ahead and do an mget on name and language to show you that we don't currently have any of those. To start a transaction in Redis, you use the multi command, which will go ahead and create a transaction and you'll get back an okay. And you can see here that we are in a transaction, we have this TX on the left-hand side here, just signifying that we're in a transaction. I'm gonna go ahead and set the name to be Tim you'll see that is now queued. So that means that it's not been run, it's not been performed yet, but it's being queued to be performed once we end the transaction. I'm gonna go ahead and set language to be Python. And you'll see that's also queued. And then to end a transaction and to run all the commands that we have queued up, we use the exact command. And you'll see we get okay, okay. And then if we run the mget name and language command, we will see we get back Tim and Python. Now we've seen a simple example of how a transaction works successfully. I'm gonna go ahead and clear all the data within our Redis database. Let's just do an mget of name and language to confirm that's all deleted. And we can see that they're both nil. We're now gonna go ahead and create a transaction with an error within that transaction. So we're gonna do some syntax that isn't correct and see what happens there. Gonna go ahead and create our transaction with the multi keyword. You can see we're now in the transaction. Let's set name to be Dave. Let's set age to be 47. You'll see they've both been queued successfully. If we then go and do a command that is gonna break, so let's use the lpop command and let's try and lpop the name. And that won't work because we can't list pop a string, which is what name currently is. You'll see that's now queued. Nothing's, nothing's run yet, it's still in the queue. If we then set language to be Java, again, that's now been queued. And then if we run the exact command, we will end our transaction and see what happens when the lpop command causes an error. We can see that the first command succeeded, the second command also succeeded, but the third command failed with the wrong type, operation against a key holding the wrong kind of value. And then you'll see that the fourth command also succeeded. And what this means is that even if you have an error, commands after it and the commands before that error will be successful. If you're familiar with SQL, where transactions will roll back if there's any error within that transaction, that doesn't happen in Redis. And if we go ahead and do an mget of name, age, and language, you will see that Dave, 47, and Java all exist. So all of those have been successful. And even with the error, the transaction has succeeded. Let's take a look at how you discard stuff within a transaction. So we've still got Dave, 47 and Java, name, age and language set. Let's create a new transaction with the multi command. We're then gonna go ahead and set language to equal Rust. And that has been queued. And then let's say we've made a mistake here. We don't want to set language to Rust. We can easily discard this with the discard command which will just end our transaction and not run any of the commands within that transaction. We've run discard. If we then do mget again, we will see that we still have day 47 and Java. So we haven't set the language to be Rust because we discarded that transaction. So with the discard command, you can essentially reject everything within your transaction. The final command we're gonna have a look at is the watch command. Now the watch command allows you to optimistically lock a value. And what this means is that you can lock the value so that if another client changes that value and you're currently editing it within a transaction, your transaction will not change that value. This might be a bit 
complicated, but we'll see it in the example and it will make absolute sense. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a count to equal one. And if we do get count, we can see it is one in the top terminal. And if we do get count, you can see it's also one in the bottom terminal. I'm then going to watch the count and we get an okay that that's worked correctly. Let's go ahead and create our transaction with the multi keyword. Within this transaction, I'm going to set count to be 100. And you'll see that that is currently queued. And we're gonna leave this transaction open while in the other terminal, we go ahead and get our count. We can see that it's still one because our transaction that's changed it to 100 hasn't been executed yet. We're then gonna go ahead and set our count to be five. And if we get our count again in the second terminal, we can see that it is indeed five. Now, because we've got the watch keyword on the count, when we execute this transaction, nothing will change because count has actually been changed underneath us. Another client has got hold of it and changed the value. So us setting the count to 100 in our transaction isn't actually correct because something else has gone ahead and changed it. If we exec this transaction, you'll see we get back nil, which means that nothing has happened within this transaction. And if we do get count, you'll see that count is actually five, not 100 that we set it to in that transaction. So what this means is that if you have the watch command on a particular key and you edit it in a transaction and something else edits it at exactly the same time while you're in that transaction, your transaction will not change the value of that key because you can't, you can't be sure that what you're doing in that transaction is actually correct. And that's some optimistic locking that exists within Redis, which is quite a useful thing to use. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel.